Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Strife Sanctum Podcast. My name is Citizen Strife, and this week I'm going to be talking about Konosuba, an explosion on this wonderful world. And I don't have as much to talk about with this as I do Konosuba itself, mainly because this focuses on a on a kind of spin-off. Now, I don't know if they're going to do spin-offs for all three characters. I mean, they potentially could do one for Darkness. And honestly, that would be somewhat exciting, I would say, with the family dynamics. Um, but I get the feeling that the concept of a Mega Mean spin-off is actually better than the execution of one. And... Uh, a lot of it has to do with the framing of how the characters work versus what happens with the other characters. And, and I'll mention why. Um, so Konosuba is amazing. I said this much when I reviewed it way back. I forget what episode it was, but it was way back. I've done it before. And I was super thrilled when I'd heard that, oh, they're going to do a spinoff off for Megamine, because there's a lot of ground you could cover, the whole demon school thing. How do you do explosion magic? What do you do? Turns out they focus a lot on how does she, you know, live her life as a mage, you know. So there's like two or three different arcs in the show. It's only about 12 episodes, but to be fair, it should have only really been about six. I said this much about, say, Ruby, Ice Queendom, where they stretched a show way thinner than it should have been. Same thing kind of applies here. And a lot of what makes Konosuba work is the suspension of disbelief for the characters being in a very basic scenario. The basic scenario is medieval times, medieval world. Not much craziness happens there's only so much ground you can cover about being in a in a fantastical medieval setting you know it's the D&D principle it's like you're only as interesting as your characters make it or as interesting as your setting makes it and if your setting only goes so far then you do have to make it work now what Konosuba does <coughs> excuse me is it makes four distinct characters and Megamine is for as funny as the show is, she's not the funny one. And I forget if that's what they were going for or if it's because she's the popular one. Because she blows shit up. And that's cool and all for a sight gag. But having watched this for 12 episodes and wondering how funny a show can get, it really comes down to what does she do for the main party that she can't do as the lead role of this? So the story basically is she's in demon school. She wants to learn explosion magic. She's a prodigy, which is good. You know, that's really fun and all that jazz. And everybody's, you know, 50 flavors of weird except for Union. And I'll get to Union in a minute because she's also part of the problem. Um, because they're the only main characters. That's really what drags the show down so they do the character arc in the school for a few episodes and they go through this whole motion of Megamine was saved and she saw the explosion magic at work and she wants to devote her life to being an explosion wizard and that's all she wants to do and she wants to meet the person who actually showed her that Union is the normal person who's kind of mousy and honestly better than she gives herself credit for, but not a dynamic personality. And the show is trying to falter, kind of falters in the sense that a lot of the funny moments are supposed to be funny because these two are the ones doing it, but they themselves are not all that funny. The people who are funny in Konosuba are Kazuma, Aqua, and Darkness. Megamine is the one bouncing off as a straight lady who's just the, the what do they call it, Shinobu? 
it's some weird phrase where they're meant to be dark as shit, but they're really just kind of a putz and a loser. That's the entire joke is they're a putz and they're a loser and they're not meant to be taken seriously because their magic is dumb. She reacts to the weirdness of Kazuma hitting on her or darkness being a crazy person or just the things around her that's nuts. When she is tasked with holding the screen, all you end up getting is a kind of like really driven yet annoying person who thinks very highly of herself, whether she's right or not. And then you contrast that with a person who's a fucking doormat, whether she's actually reason, you know, reasonably powerful in her own right. Union keeps thinking she's a, a, a rival and, you know, it's the, oh my God, I'm sort of, you know, Sundari. Oh my God, I'm sort of a doormat. Like they don't work well together when there's not anything else going on. So they're supposed to carry 12 episodes and they don't. And you're kind of left hoping that the rest of the people around them, which, you know, sometimes in the school you'll have characters do it. I remember the end of like the second or third episode, I forget which, where the town itself is fighting these monsters and they just go reveling in the fact that they have this crazy magic and they blow everything up and then they have to clean everything up themselves because they blew everything up. But it doesn't feel like Konosuba comedy. And Konosuna comedy is the characters bouncing off each other with weird zany antics or even crude, crude stuff. It's Kazuma hitting on Megumin because they're locked in a they're locked in a room and she's, you know, screaming to herself that this dude is a fucking perv. It's darkness sitting there just heaving uncontrollably at the screen and Kazuma goes like, I'm Kazuma. Just weird stuff. That doesn't happen because these two characters are not that kind of comedy. You'll get that sometimes from the characters. Um, but it really doesn't strike me until the sixth or seventh episode where they go into the town of the weird church. I want to say, what was it? The Church of Eris or something like that? It, it's the second town, the town of water that they go in. Not, not the main town, Axel. I think it's the other one part of the second season they go like Megamine earns money Union earns money and they go to the town and they find these people that are trying to proselytize and convert people to their church and basically do like a pyramid scheme if they were a church which you know but the comedy at play is great because they have this weird nun that just is a laugh riot. You also have the main priest who's kind of like up his own ass, but he's funny about it and he thinks he's better than he actually is because they have character, because they have like intrigue, because they think big picture, because they're willing to make the butt of the joke, but they themselves are still funny. The Konosuba comedy shines through because Megamine is not the main fixture of the plot. Megamine's whole problem is that she's too self-serious and she doesn't really make snide comments without a without an air of condescension. Konosuma's best when it's not trying to be condescending, except to each other, but it doesn't feel like they themselves are above it all. And that's really the main problem. Yeah, there's a main plot. And you'll notice that I haven't really talked about the main plot because it doesn't really matter. Because this is, how does Megamine join the party? You know, that's all that it, all this is. Yeah, there's a cat that keeps getting renamed. There's a cat that is apparently some demon lord, you know, repurposed as a cat that she's carrying around. It's, it's dumb. It's, it's stupid. You know, it's not meant to be taken seriously. So I don't have to take it seriously at all. I'm here for the character dynamics and, and the intrigue. And hopefully, if they were to do something like Darkness, which I think would be the next one if they do do it, would be, what are the mechanisms of her family? How the hell does she get so fucking weird and always just gung-ho about getting hurt? You know, there's a lot of comedy that she could provide that Megumin as a character can't. 
And then maybe as an aside character, having something there. Because again, darkness comes across as somebody who's willing to jump in the fray and do everything despite being completely useless. So there's a lot of sight gags you could do. Megami doesn't have that. Union obviously doesn't have that. So the show fails as a spinoff because you're relying on the wrong type of characters to prop up the wrong type of show. If this was like... I mean, obviously, Konosuba would not be free written, right? And even then, that would be wrong. But I could see somebody like Megamine in that as opposed to this. Take themselves super seriously, have them in a serious plot, and try to be the, you know, try to go on a journey with stuff on on the line whatever it, it, this fails at the first hurdle because it's trying to be something it's not but uh, again did i enjoy it sort of and again it's killing time until the next set of konosuba gets there but if you haven't seen it and the next season starts in what a week two weeks so it's like just wait so this is one of those like rare times that i'm sitting there going you're not getting anything out of this. So would I recommend the Megumin Konosuba spinoff? Not really. You're getting a a 6.5 or a 7 level show out of something that was easily a 9 in terms of stuff. It's like those second seasons of shows that took some time off and forgot what they were and they were just like, eh, nah, nah. But whatever. Can't win them all, and yes, even I will sometimes recommend not watching a thing. I know that's a rare occurrence, but hey, sometimes that happens. But hopefully you you get where I'm coming from, and it makes sort of sense and whatnot. But next week's video will be about Sea of Stars. Speaking of things that I was liking until I wasn't. So, um, I mean, that I'd played too, but whatever. Hey, I gotta have a couple of weeks where I rag on things that aren't as great as I thought they would be. So, hey, next week is Sea of Stars. I get right into recording that one next time. So, see you then.